This show is brought to you by listeners and viewers like you. EvanX.com Tesla Accessories, our Tesla Owners Online.com community, and our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash Tesla Owners Online. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another episode of the Tesla Owners Online podcast. I'm your host, Trevor Page. This is episode 103. It's May 20th, 2021. And hey, I have my regular host, Ian Pavelko. And guess who's joining us? Eric Camacho. Eric is back. Eric is back. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, you know, what's that What's that old movie? Just when I thought that I'm out, they pull me back in. Yeah, it's like the mob. You're not getting out, son. <laughs> well, Eric- well the, good, the good thing is I'm across the border and you can't get here to come get me, so I guess I'm okay. <laughs> we have operatives. Yeah, right. That's right. Well, we have lots to talk about, and it's kind of funny because we were just talking before the show. It's like, uh, you know, we should do this every two weeks because, you know, we're a little light on Tesla news. And then, oh my gosh, <laughs> over the last week, and especially the last couple of days, my gosh, so much stuff has been piling up. So, you know what? The timing is perfect. So we got lots to talk about. We're going to talk about Cybertruck. We're going to talk about Roadster. We're going to talk about the new F-150. There's just so much to to get into. Um, Eric, how have you been? Anyways, we haven't seen you in a little bit. So what have you been up to? Well, um, I don't want to get too much of my personal life story on here. Uh, Things have been sort of weird. Uh, I just recently got laid off uh, from my uh, two-year committed job uh, recently. So I'm now in the quest for new employment. So that's really been keeping me busy. Um, Other than that, you know what? We're all healthy, fully vaccinated. Uh, It's been weird to like go out to places without masks and see other people. Yeah. Uh, But it is is good to see friends. Uh, For those of you that follow him on Twitter... Uh, Tesla Tino, Raphael, uh, he uh, welcomed me to his house the other day. We reunited for the first time in 15 months Wow! Uh, since the base camp event for EV and T uh, back in early 2020. So um, it's, it's, it's weird to have some semblance of normalcy because of how long it's been that we've had really none of it. Uh, but it's, it's really good to just be with people for a bit in person and see friends and family and and all feel like we're we're being safe and conscientious about uh, about everything. So, yeah, that's that's where things are. It's a very weird place to be in right now. Um, <laughs> but I have a lot of time on my hands. So let's let's uh, <laughs> let's get going with the show. Okay. Well, thanks for the filler in. Uh, yeah, I'm really hoping that things start going back to normal because, uh, I mean, you're supposed to come and visit. So hopefully the borders will be open maybe sometime in July. We'll see. So we'll hope. We'll, we'll keep see. our fingers crossed. All right. Well, with that, let's jump right in. We got so much to talk about. First of all, I'm going to share up my screen here so that those of you watching on uh, the YouTube, um, you guys can follow along. So make sure you go and subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can see what we're talking about. So let's start off with Cybertruck. Well, this picture surfaced on Twitter and it shows uh, some very large castings. Now, for those of you who are following along with Tesla, Tesla has hired a company or using a company called Idra out of Italy who make the world's largest aluminum casting machines. Uh, right now they have a machine that... Uh, that does 6,100 tons, and supposedly for the Cybertruck, they're going to be making an 8,000-ton machine, and um, I don't have it right here, but there was also a report that there's a 9,000-ton machine that they've made in China, or for China. Anyways, we'll see. So anyways, uh, everybody was speculating about this, and I was looking at it really tightly, and everybody was saying, oh, it's the new Cybertruck, because, of course, uh, that factory's for the Cybertruck. And on closer inspection, no, we're looking at the very first front casting for the Model Y with the structural battery pack. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, this was made in um, in Texas, and uh, since then, uh, the drone flyers who are... Uh, thankfully, flying on a daily basis down there, uh, had caught a whole pile of them uh, being put onto tractor trailers, ostensibly, most likely in my case, I, I think, being taken back to uh, Fremont or uh, Tesla's me- uh, metrology labs to be tested and make sure that they're within spec before they start full-scale uh, construction. But this also does confirm the fact that uh, Cybertruck, or not Cybertruck, but Model Y being made at the uh, Texas factory will indeed have the 4680 cells because those are the ones being used for the uh, uh, for the structural battery pack. So, anyways, pretty damn big castings. I mean, these obviously get cut at some you know. I mean, there's little ingots and stuff they gotta they gotta cut out and stuff. But uh, pretty cool. What do you guys think? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's. <laughs> I mean, at first glance, you go, man, man, that's a pretty big casting. But the thing you have to remember is that it's it's up on a platform, like it's on one of those um, like conveyor belt uh, things. As a guy who spends his time like working on castings that you know. Developed 
pieces of metal around 20, 30 pounds. This blew my mind to see. It's like, holy smokes, man. The intricacy in that. It's just a work of art. It's stunning. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. And uh, speaking of Cybertruck, uh, the Cybertruck made another appearance at the Tesla um, factory uh, that's being constructed in uh, Texas. I uh, just want to bring up this little thing here because I noticed it and I, ha I had tweeted this out because I was watching one of the um, the flyover videos and as he was flying by, you could see a Cybertruck like right there on the uh, on the second floor and everybody's like, what's going on? What's going on? And everybody was saying, oh, it's a cardboard cutout and it's this and that. And of course, we got some footage a little bit later of it driving down. But uh, upon closer inspection, one of the drone flyers had come by and lo and behold, on the uh, premises, here's the transport truck that Tesla uses to uh, cart the uh, the truck around. So this was the same truck that was spotted in uh, New York City dropping off the Cybertruck there for the um, Saturday Night Live episode. And yeah, sure enough, there it is. It even has Tesla markings on the side. If you want to zoom in here, it says uh, property of uh, Tesla, not for hire. So it's definitely the truck. So anyways, that ends that speculation. It was definitely truck there because some guys were like, oh, they, they supercharged it and they brought it down. I'm saying, and I was saying to people, if they supercharged it, people would have seen it and they would have taken pictures. It was trucked. You think? <laughs> you think? <laughs> exactly. Again, it's a prototype. It's not really load, road legal everywhere. They've put it on the roads. They've always had chase cars, special permission, that type of thing. So anyways, the truck is certainly getting around. This is its second appearance at the uh, Tesla Gigafactory. So um, yeah, Tesla's uh, certainly driving it around. Anyhow, um, let's see here. What else we got on the Cybertruck? Whoa! Toy lovers. Now, how many of you missed out on the $400 limited edition <laughs> RC Mattel? Cybertruck. <laughs> well, I have some good news for you, folks, because they are releasing uh, tomorrow. So if you're listening to this podcast, tomorrow's Friday, you'll be able to pre-order this uh, vehicle. It is a one-tenth scale, so it's literally the same size as the one that Raj showed us on the last podcast that we did, but it's simpler. It, it doesn't go as fast. It doesn't have as many features, and some people are asking, what are the features that are missing? Well, it doesn't have the rolling tonneau cover in the back. It doesn't have the drop-down tailgate. It doesn't have the light bar at the top. The headlights and the taillights still light up and um, no interior. There's a couple of other things too. And it's not, obviously it's not quite as fast, but the remote control, it looks more like a Cybertruck steering wheel. So it's modeled after that. And it comes with a toy uh, ATV, the cyber quad that goes in the back. Now that is not remote controlled or anything like that. It's just a little plastic thing that you can put in the back. Anyways, retail price on this is going to be $100 US. I was able to verify it's going to be selling for $129 Canadian. So, you know, pull out your Copex and you can buy one of those things. I think they're going to be for sale at Toys R Us, at least in Canada. Yes, we still do have Toys R Us up here. Anyways, it's a pretty neat little design. Um, I mean, if you've seen it before, there's nothing really missing other than the fact that it's uh, it's a cheaper model. So, Ian, what do you think? Are you going to get one of these? I want one. I'm going to order one. Oh, right hell away. yeah. I mean, I, I thought 400 US was a little steep for yeah. the OG one. Um, but, uh, you know, I had pangs of guilt and especially after seeing Raj's videos, like, damn, that, that's just looks like, so you know much what, fun to play at, around at, with, at you a know? hundred bucks, if I flip it, I don't yeah. care, but $400 and you're scratching the hell out of that. Yeah. Thing? <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. And then it's the limited edition thing, right? you like, you don't want to play with it. Like, well, you're going to tie up that money in this, you know, it's like the Tesla Kila. It's like, I'm going to buy the bottle and I can't drink it. It's just like all this, uh, no, but this <laughs> sure for 129 bucks, thrash it. It's Have funny. Fun, it's know? funny. Cause I was talking to Raj today and he was still upset about the fact that he flipped it over and he said, man, I had I know and I would have ordered a second one and not opened it. I would have kept it in the box. And he's like, oh, he's all bummed out. But he says, you know what? I might just order one of these and use this instead. So, <laughs> And our friend Dax actually took his, because um, he ordered one too, the, the original one. He took it to a detailer and he had PPF put all over it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did a video on it. Such a Tesla owner. Uh, I know. <laughs> you know what? It's something never... I would do. It never ceases to amaze me the number of stories I hear like that of owners who have such expendable amounts of money to go, you know, and I damaged the heck out of that one. Let me get another one so I can have it as my showcase car. And then, yeah. oh, you know what? We're going to we're going to make sure that we don't get dust on it. We're going to put some special coatings on it. Like, holy crap, people <laughs> like, man, like I remember like the, the like the small Hot Wheels cars, those collector cars that uh, Michael Bodner and many others have gotten over the years, um, like trying to get your hands on those, like understanding you want that entire collection. That's one thing I can't imagine spending four hundred dollars on an RC vehicle that you get a scratch on. And you're like, no, like, well, you spend four hundred dollars on it. What, like, you, you know. My goodness. Well, well, remember when Tesla had their limited edition surfboard that was $1,500? Right. And it sold like an hour's. Yeah. And and yet some people are buying it. I'm like, do you surf? No. 
Are you going to use right. it? No. I just no. want it. Oh, well. Tesla there are people bottles. I've no. known that have done more, have spent more money <laughs> refining their garage just to put the car and then they spend on the car. Like there's dedication yeah. and then there's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, we got a lot of crazy in this community, and oh, I fully yeah. endorse crazy. Let me let me be clear here. Okay? Oh, you're you're one of the founding members, good sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah, I, I don't help in, in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I was gonna say, listen, if a wheel question comes on a forum, your your face lights up like it's Christmas morning. You're like, ah, my keyboard is ready, fully charged. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> Anyhow. So yeah, four hundred bucks I wouldn't spend, but this one hundred, hundred, and hundred twenty-nine. Yeah, sure, okay, I'll bite. I should point out. I don't know if you guys saw, but um, Daryl from Drive Tesla Canada claims that there have been sightings of these things already on the shelves. Yes, it's very store. reminiscent of the little tiny Cybertruck, the one sixty-fourth scale that popped up. Uh, apparently, they'd started putting a few on the shelves. Now, those reports had come out of, I think it was Vancouver, no, uh, Rich Richmond, BC, and Coquitlam, if I remember correctly. Um, you sure it wasn't the 110th, this guy right here? It, no, no, I'm talking about the 64th scale. They were put on the shelves in advance, and they weren't supposed to. This 110th has been cited on shelves in BC, right. again, ahead of when they're supposed to come out. I've been checking. Correct. There's a website where you can check this. Uh, we have the SKU number, and I've been checking, and uh, I don't see anything locally. So anyways, I'll check tomorrow. We'll see what happens. But uh, anyways, I'll send you the deets offline. All right. Okay, let's move on. Uh, again, this article comes from our friends at uh, Tesla Roddy talking about the Model Y from the Giga Texas will launch with 4680 sales, as we had mentioned before. This was actually confirmed again by Elon. Our friend um, on Whole Mars blog on Twitter had asked, will Austin start producing 2170 Model Y? Now talking about the same sales using the Model 3 and the Model Y, or jump straight to the 4680. And Elon confirmed they're going st straight to the 4680. So again, that confirms that they're going to be using the larger cell format with the structural battery pack, because you don't do 4680s without the structural um, thing. Uh, matter of fact, if you watch the reveal event where they had last September, when they were talking about the battery day, uh, there's a whole schematic behind them showing, there, and it's definitely a Model Y if you look at it, where it shows the structural battery pack. So um, that's definitely happening. And the, of course, the Model Y being made in Berlin is also going to have the structural battery pack. So it looks like in some ways they may be ahead of schedule a little bit. We'll see. Again, I'm not anticipating seeing a lot of um, production on this, at least initially, because they still have to ramp up. And of course, I know some people online were saying, well, I'm, I'm going to order a Model Y, but I'm going to order the one out of Austin because I don't want one with you know, all these advancements coming out of Fremont. Um, the thing with Fremont is that they're right now, they're the only plant making the Model Y and they're running full tilt. Matter of fact, I was just at Tesla this past week and the whole parking lot, nothing but Model Ys. I counted one Model 3. So, I mean, it's a production thing right now because a lot of them are going to Europe and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, Model Y is, is a big deal and they can't go and make changes at Fremont without stopping production. So anyways, all those changes will happen in Fremont in due time, but not until Giga Texas is up and running at full blower so they can actually take some of the load off of Fremont. So anyways, that's what's happening there. Uh, let's see here, moving on a little bit. Let's talk about Roadster. It seems that um, Roadster is getting some love finally. Um, for those of you who don't know, there is the, the single and only drivable prototype that we know of of the Roadster is currently on display at the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles. So if you want to get down there and get some uh, some tickets, you can actually go and see it. This is the red one that you've been seeing at the events, and they, they trot out from one, um, uh, once in a while. So lots of our friends have been down there taking pictures. It's a beautiful car. And, uh, yeah, everybody's going crazy over it. But our friend Zach, Black Model 3, took a very interesting picture. Because uh, when it first showed up, there was no placards. It just said Tesla Roadster. But lo and behold, when he went down, he caught a picture of this. Now, this is the placard, and I'm going to read it here for those of you who are maybe listening to the podcast and maybe not viewing on on, on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole paragraph. They're just basically saying, unveiled in 27, blah, 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 and 2017, blah, blah, blah. But there's a paragraph in here that says, demonstrating the versatility of electric power and adding extra distinction to the car's already high performance, an announced SpaceX package, of course, Elon has confirmed they were going to be doing that, an announced SpaceX package would outfit the Roadster with cold air rocket thrusters positioned at the rear, allowing for a 0 to 60 mile per hour acceleration time of 1.1 seconds. Now, I had always speculated that I thought with the SpaceX it might get us into about 1.5 seconds. But 1.1? <laughs> it's game over. 
Um, that's that that's like completely insane. You're talking about, you know, the original times were like 1.9, 1.8, whatever, you know, you're, you're, you're chopping model. that down. Yeah. You know, by another 80 percent again. It's nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. And the thing is, is I have to remember with wheels, I mean, we're almost at the theoretical limits of, of friction trap of, of, of friction of what wheels can actually achieve. And mm-hmm. of course, obviously, well, that's, that, that is the limiting factor when you get it, you yeah. know, sub two second. And my math is way out. Sorry. It's about 40 percent less, right? 40, 50 percent yeah. less. Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, you're way beyond. Yeah. You, you need something like that. I mean, and this is why uh, they're cheating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, wrinkle wall drag tires, you know, like can do that because there's some very peculiar physics going on where they, they physically like connect with the asphalt, like mechanically, yeah. but you can't drive those on the street. You'd kill yourself. So anything you could drive on the street, you, you, you're never going to get to one second. There's just no way. But yeah. with <laughs> thrust, <hoo-hoo. laughs> So uh, it looks like the, and, and I was talking to some other people offline about this, and it looks to me that the Roadster is back on the front burner now. I mean, engineering on the model uh, on, on the Cybertrucks is, is done. The, se- the semi-truck is done. Um, you have to remember when Tesla first announced the Roadster and the semi at the same time, this was in December of 2017. They had not even started production hell on the Model 3. So, right. you know, they had gathered all of their engineers to get that. So everything else literally went off to the wayside. And, you know, here we are four years later and technology moves on. Now we got the Plaid Model S, which is pulling the drivetrain out of the Roadster. So obviously, you know, all that R&D now has been done and can be either slightly improved for the Roadster. And now they can bring it back to the forefront and improved upon. Speaking of which, and this really caught me by surprise because Elon... <laughs> went back on uh, on um, on um, where is it here? Uh, I just got to bring up the tweet. Where is it? My goodness, I lost it. Anyways, Elon went on Twitter and said that the final production version of the Roadster will look different. He says it'll look better. And I was like, whoa, whoa, hold the phone here. How is, it gonna, how is this thing going to look better? So obviously they've had some time to do some nips and some tucks. We don't know exactly how much they're going to change. But uh, they're going to make a beautiful car, apparently even more beautiful. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, it definitely looks like, and, and Elon did confirm they, they plan on starting production of this thing next year. So we still don't know where it's going to be built, although I have my suspicions it'll be Giga Texas. And um, again, the other speculation is that... Um, <clears throat> Of course, one of the things that people are taking pictures of is the sheer amount of carbon fiber on this car. And I was telling people, yeah, but what's under the paint? <laughs> right? We talked about this mm-hmm. before. We think it's going to be an all carbon fiber body. And for those of you who think that uh, a car that costs $250,000 is too cheap to have carbon fiber because million dollar cars have carbon fiber. Um, remember the first Roadster, the original Roadster? That was all carbon fiber. That was $110,000. So it's not impossible to have a car at this price with full carbon fiber. So... Um, and that was made by Lotus. That wasn't made by Tesla. So obviously Tesla's going to have to have their own production facilities to do all that stuff. So anyways, we're keeping an eye on this. We're getting excited, but it looks like it's back onto the front burner for this kind of thing. All right. Um, let's see here. Okay. So the next thing is our friend Kilowatts in uh, San Francisco spotted at Laguna Seca, the new Plaid Model S doing laps. And uh, it is fast. It's zipping around. But what's most important and what's more interesting about this, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit and encourage you guys that are watching on YouTube or maybe you're listening to the podcast, please go check our YouTube channel. This thing has a big active spoiler built into the back. Did you guys see that? Mm-hmm. That's pretty wild. It is. It's it's pretty badass looking. I mean, you know, uh, and I love the fact that it's retractable, so you can yep. take the thing to the restaurant. You don't look like an idiot. But when you're out on the track, it looks badass. You know, like it, it can play both roles. It's cool, you know? And, it, and kind of like... I, right I, kinda, I find it interesting that they actually did finally implement it because last year when they were testing this at uh, Nürburgring, uh, they had wings attached to it in various forms. Um, they were doing, obviously, some downforce testing on it. And then, lo and behold, this thing actually has an active spoiler i'm like totally um i don't suspect this will be on the base model s or the performance one this is i think personally i think is the plaid uh the high-end plaid plus model model s so you'll have to wait for the 4680 cells and maybe next year to be able to get this but anyways um they're setting records apparently according to them they were setting um they just secured a one minute 30 second unconfirmed of course so anyways, uh, looks like it's the fastest car to go around Laguna Seca so far. 
And Elon did comment on the tweet, and I don't have it here in front of me. Fastest sedan, I think, Trev. There are some cars that cracked oh, into yes, the 129. Sedan. Thank yeah. you for the correction. Yes, of course. Yeah. So anyways, it's looking uh, really cool. Um, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here because Elon did confirm that the Plaid Model S delivery event is scheduled for June 3rd at the California factory, so the factory in Fremont. Um, fastest production car ever, 0 to 60 in under 2 seconds. So... For those of you who are expecting um, Elon to hold that press conference and talk more about the Model S, obviously it's not happening that way. So they're actually going to do some kind of event. Obviously, they're going to have something in person, and it will be live streamed. So for those of you asking, Tesla always live streams their uh, their events and stuff. So looking forward to that. Put that on your calendar. We'll find more about the uh, the new Plaid Model S that's coming out. Um, any and thoughts this is, on this? And this is how many months delayed from the original plan? Was it in March? Yeah, yeah it's... No, it's... It, I went back through the tweets, and uh, I think he was saying early February that was supposed okay. to be out. So obviously they've had either some production issues or some additional testing that they had to do, cal uh, qualifications. Uh, so yeah, it's it's overdue. Or more COVID issues, perhaps. Uh, who knows? Anything is possible. They're, they're not telling us, but obviously they've had some delays. So anyways, it looks like it's finally coming, and um, people are looking forward to that. I, I know I have a friend of mine who actually ordered one. I, I actually have... Not to say anything about this, but I, I have referrals that are still pending since December and January. So oh, yeah. obviously people are waiting for S's and X's now, the, the new refreshes. And I have a friend of mine who's waiting for one uh, so I can do a review on it and take a look at it. So obviously he's probably jumping for joy now. He's finally going to get a... Well, hopefully a, most a of those orders, um, you know, the customers have not been so impatient as to want to cancel them. Um you know, and also the fact that if they do finally get deliveries in the months ahead, that these folks aren't like finding minuscule issues and saying, you know what, I don't, I'm not going to take delivery, take the car back. Because um, we know there were some Model Y issues out the gate uh, early on. So hopefully they've kind of addressed those, especially with the long sustained shutdown we've had of the S and X production lines that they're going to be uh, ironed out before they go full swing. There are several factors about this Model S you have to remember. It does have an all new battery pack. Now I'm not saying it's 4680 cells. I'm, it's still going to use most, I'm guessing here, it's probably still the 18650 cell format, uh, but it surely has improvements in the battery pack similar to what they've done on the Model 3 and stuff. So obviously that took some time to qualification. Um, I have through, heard through the grapevine that uh, one of the delays is possibly for the new software. We have seen screenshots and it does look different. So this could be the, f the fabled version 11 that everybody's waiting for. <laughs> so there's several factors involved here for the delays. Not that it's good or anything, but uh, it is what it mm. is. All right. Um, speaking of software, our friend Green has tweeted that uh, the recent 2021 4.15.8 has added code to detect when driver vacates their seat. Obviously, this is uh, in response to some of the crashes that we've seen and the idiots on social media doing stupid things. So that's always welcome. <sighs> I know. I know. Um, so and, that, he was, and that happens whether they're in a Tesla or not. Of, of course, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's, we all know the Tesla ones are the only ones. Yes. That well, you know what? And, and I will tell you, we've. I, I I tend to not be so entrenched in Tesla news on a daily basis as some of our audience might be. Um, I will tell you that I was sort of taken aback by the coverage of some of the recent incidents that happened, in part because there is always the outrage and the aggression and the resentment that comes out when the stories are first reported because we don't, A, have all the facts, and B, it's there. There a lot of people are very quick to, de to point, these detractors in most cases, to point to Tesla and say, aha, so you have a faulty product, what are you gonna do about it? When we completely exempt the driver or the owner from any responsibility, which we shouldn't, we should not have them abdicate their responsibilities. So, but then when, when time has had a chance to sort of elapse and the dust finally settles and the truth finally comes out, there aren't a lot of retractions and apologies. It's sort no. of just like, all right, we move on to the next story. And, and seeing this cycle repeat ad nauseum uh, over the years, it's kind of getting unnerving because while the timeline that Elon himself has projected as far as full on functionality of FSD and the subscription service, like we know everything right now, there's, it's rare that anything that Tesla has ever done is an on time delivery, right? Like most of their things are delayed for one reason or another. So a be patient with all of that, because that's just par for the course with them. But more importantly with B it's, 
they're trying to make a better product in a way that no one else has done before, but people are taking advantage of that. It's And again, it's a yeah. very tiny, tiny number of people who are getting into a car, whether they own it or don't. It's a very tiny, tiny number, but the news is just quick to point their cameras the direction the minute that one of those stories comes out. And I'm not faulting the media as a as a glo- as an entire uh, group, but it's just you know we're we're so quick to I want to report it first, yeah, mm-hmm. before instead of reporting it correctly. Mm-hmm. And Bingo. It, and and so that's the thing is we're so quick to judge on having the surface level we're skimming the top of the water on these stories when we really need to go to the full depths and when we go to the full depths we then realize oh there was a lot obviously a lot we we're missing out on um, just my thoughts no and that's certainly appreciated and i would agree with yeah. that i'm 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 very much tired of the whole autopilot's at fault for literally everything in the news media when it's patently false but anyways yeah All and a lot do- of owners have have said out from the outset to avoid getting in trouble saying autopilot or it is auto accelerated when we look at the driver logs and we eventually do the crash investigation and find out that that's that's almost never the case it's almost always driver fault so you know we, we it's, it's easy to point to a machine and say the machine did it but it's humans behind the machine in every which way between developers and coders and drivers and owners and it's it's always people behind these things well elon said it best right tesla's a drama magnet yeah <laughs> But occasionally there's humor that comes out of even the worst of it. I mean, I laughed so hard, I guess, a couple of weeks ago, right when this was all going down, where I, I wish I knew who it was on Twitter, but posted a picture of their kid's radio flyer Model S, you know, the little mm-hmm. electric one. Right. And the kid had like rammed it into the wall full speed and destroyed the front end on it and standing beside it, pointing at it and goes, she blames autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was fantastic. Did you see the meme that was going around where it's a, it's like a cartoon of somebody riding their bike and then somebody sticks a stick through the front wheel and yeah. he flips over yeah, and yeah. he's going, damn autopilot. Perfect. Like they're literally, yeah, yeah they're, they're blaming too. everything on autopilot. All right. Well, getting back to the software, I just want to mention one other thing. Uh, Green also mentions that the auto high beam cannot be disabled while auto steer or traffic aware cruise control is active. And I've seen quite a bit of this on the forum where people are complaining about this. Um, I don't use auto high beam. I actually have it turned off in my car because I just find it, you know, it's, 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 it's spastic. It's spastic. It's, it's almost as wonky as auto wiper. Yeah. Well, auto wiper three apparently is still not in this release yet, but anyways, that's coming. So yeah, there's lots to talk about this. So I, I don't know what's what what the thinking is. I don't know if this is a precursor to them eliminating radar. So maybe they're training the systems to be a full vision system and they need a little bit more brightness at, at night. I mean, there's talk about this. So I don't know what the situation is, but I know a lot of people are complaining about this. So just be aware of it. Um, so that, uh, you know, if you do this, I, I literally just got a software update on my car there yet, a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. but um, it's not this version. I just have uh, .15, not the latest .8. So anyways, just be aware of that. All right. Speaking of uh, software as well, again, going back to our friend uh, Green, uh, somebody was asking him, what do you think about uh, what's something that we don't know about on 21.4.15.10? Uh, uh, and uh, Green says that the, lately the concentration is on driver monitoring. Now, he's been tweeting quite a bit about his experiments. We talked about this on the last couple of shows, I believe. Um, Tesla's doing a lot of work on driver monitoring. Obviously, I think this has been stepped up because of the accidents and um, you know the idiocy that's going on in social media and stuff. So right now, the, the, the latest software update is you know detecting more of the driver being in the seat. So if he's not in the seat, turns off. And in this case, they're doing some active driver monitoring. So that little camera that's built into your Model 3 and your Model Y, and very soon the new S's and X's will uh, come live. And I'll be watching you, making sure you're paying attention, not lifting your phone up, right? I always feel like somebody's, somebody's watching, watching me. me. Those of you who are <laughs> Thanks, not old Rob, enough. <laughs> yes. Great song by the song. Yes. Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson say, sang back up on that one. You can tell mm-hmm. right away. As a, as a favor. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and lastly, um, 2021, uh, eight, uh, let me start over. 2021 4.18 uh, brings animal assets to the masses. So uh, Tesla has added uh, some extra 3D models um, in the autopilot system. So then when it detects cats and dogs as obstructions, they're displayed on the screen. Not a big deal, but just, 
nice to know that they're actually looking for that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and he I'll, said assets, not asses. Yes, assets. Did so I say assets? assets? I'm sorry. To be clear. That's, no, no. A, that's a word just, my we're wife just, we're, just, we're just letting people know. It's <laughs> assets with a T. Uh, exactly. Um, yeah. Also, some unspecified voice command improvements. So um, our team um, on the forum, we got a bunch of people that have discovered a whole pile of uh, voice commands who are actively monitoring that stuff so if we have anything you guys can monitor that forum i'll try and remember to put a link in the uh in the video in the podcast description so you guys can follow along what those guys are doing he also says that auto wipers version 3 is not present yet so obviously tesla's still working on that and uh that is the news that i have to talk about this week we're, um, we're not we're not going to talk about elon on snl well, you uh-huh. can mention if you want to. I mean, some of it was cringe. Some of it was like kind of funny. Um, I think it's interesting that it's the first time that Elon actually admitted that he has Asperger's. Yeah, that that, that was big. I, obviously, that was one of the big takeaways, I think, as a dudes item. was that, It explains uh, a lot, though, when you think about it in some ways. Oh, I did, you, did you guys well. not know, though? Like, you really didn't know. I mean, clearly. Well, listen, you know, you have ideas, but you don't want to go or, and start spreading rumors and talking about it. Of course. I'm, I mean? I'm not going to I'm not going to obviously go on the Internet and like start rumor mongering about some person. But I always felt like there was something there. There was something, you know, that could be diagnosed in some way. I'm certainly not a professional to make that diagnosis, but I'm like, something is a bit off. I know I'm off. Right. Like, <laughs> I just know I am. Way. Um, but I, I, I always felt like there is something with him. He's high functioning or something or, you know, whatever it is. But, um, yeah, it, it wasn't like when I heard about it through the news outlets, I was like, well, that makes sense. Like I, I didn't, it didn't come as like, what? Oh, no. Oh man. No. So, well, regardless, yeah, it, I thought it, some it, of this was, was just one of, one of those things. that's like, well, yeah, uh, yeah. of course. Why, why wouldn't he I guess he just chose that moment. I think it was a well-chosen moment to do it, you know. Because it was a good it was monologue. Like, you're not going to get a larger audience than that. No, no, no exactly. Right. So, no, sure, made, and made it was, sense and it was, I thought it was a good monologue. And the skits were like, okay, some of them were kind of like, okay, not my style. But, um, I mean, for a guy who's not an actor, I thought he did did pretty well. I watched I watched zero seconds of that episode. <laughs> I, I It was on my DVR. I'm like, I'm deleting it right away. Um, I, I will tell you this, though. This is just a personal aside. I honestly wished, and I understand it's a ratings grab in some regards, mm-hmm. that people who are earnestly talented, who, um, I mean, there's people that are famously like auditioned for SNL but never got casted, but themselves have gone on to amazing, Jim Carrey, for example, uh, amazing fame for him. Um, but I honestly wish like, we're, we need to stop putting on like politicians and athletes and non-actors, like the show deserves good performances to make the skits work. And when you have someone who's sort of like at a frenetic pace, something like that, that's not used to that. Um, and is all of a sudden like have to wear makeup and costumes and read from cue card. Like I get it. I understand why they're doing it, but like it's the shit's kind of getting old and <laughs> people like Elon, like if, if, um, if Bill Gates were to be on the show or um, um, I, I, I'm blanking on now the Amazon uh, Jeff, Jeff Bezos, J- Jeff Bezos. Thank you. If he's all of a sudden on, I'd be like, that's okay. Now, now you need to stop. Yeah. You yeah, know, jump, like yeah, Donald yeah. Trump was on there a number of times. I'm like, can we, can we not, this is why people get celebrity status. They're not celebrities. They're just people in a job. And you know, so celebrities should be on that show. It's about celebrities and musicians and stuff like that. Fine lab has a line of protective coatings that were engineered to protect your Tesla's paint, leather, carpet, plastic, and wheels effectively blocking all those UV rays and environmental factors before they ever get to ruin your brand new baby. Fine Lab offers a complete line of car care products and ceramic coatings for both the do-it-yourselfer and professional detailers. Did we mention we also have the world's first self-healing coating? Check us out at finelab.com, that's spelled F-E-Y-N-L-A-B, to see the science behind the self-healing. Check out our product catalog and click contact us for a free quote from a certified installer in your area. Fine Lab and Tesla. We were meant for each other. I, I will. I will say this, Eric. If there's one segment you should watch, is the skit uh, about SpaceX and Chad. No, I can't. It I was. Just, I, it I was can't. actually really I, funny. I, I tweeted out before the show aired. <laughs> I'm not watching this episode. I can't listen. Just watch the I've, Chad one. I'll send you the link. No, it's listen, quite I've funny. seen. I you sent out the Sprockets uh, yeah, sort yeah. of look like thing. I, yeah. so, the I've seen, show. I got I've a lot of hits still, on that. I've seen still photos, and it made me want, not want to watch it even more. 
Well, the SpaceX like, one is not really about Elon. He's in there for like two seconds, but it's I just get, the rest listen, of it. It's he, pretty funny. He's 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 on weekend update for like a hot minute. I, yeah, no, that was dumb. No, <laughs> it's like if you were to tell me there's so and so's sex tape, I'm not interested. Okay. No, not, not even the Super Mario one as Wario. He was great as Wario. Listen, that was a funny. Am I it's am funny. I speaking French right now? I don't want, want to see it. All right. All right, I'm not pushing. I'm not okay. selling. Don't what? push you don't it. Listen. It. I, 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 I feel like I just went on a bad date with the two of you. I don't want to see you again. I don't want to see it again. So. All right. Let's not All belabor right. the point. Uh, let's, talk about, <laughs> let's talk about Ford's F-150 Lightning. Yes. Now, what's the proper spelling of Lightning? Because apparently Ford couldn't even get it right. <laughs> it's L-I-G-H-T-N-I-N-G. Yes. And lightning. Some of the, not some lightning. Of the, yes. Lightning is when you're trying to make something brighter. Yes. It's lightning i jest i jest but yeah literally of some of the people at ford couldn't even spell it properly in tweets they they had a lot of speech issues like they're reading off of a um a script that's pre-written and they still couldn't say it correctly sometimes well it happens it happens um right so they presented this thing at uh, 9 30 p.m eastern standard time in dearborn michigan and i mean that's deliberately chosen because they're going to build it at the root the, the the ancient i say ancient the old rouge where they used to build the Model T, and I think it's it's quite fitting. Um, mm-hmm. So we had seen some leaked images from the day before when President Biden had taken one of the prototypes for um, a spin around the track, mm-hmm. and uh, there was one literally right behind him at the podium, so we kind of knew what it was going to look like. Unsurprisingly, yeah. it looks like an F-150. Um, they're certainly not doing a Cybertruck thing, and nor would I ever expect them to do anything like that. Um, I don't have all of the specs in front of me, but they are offering essentially three trim levels, right? So they got a $40,000 one, $53,000 one, a higher one. Fully spec'd out. It's coming in at just over $90,000, all things in. Um, Some neat things. Uh, It has a huge frunk, which is Mm -hmm. awesome. So they've packaged things quite well on the vehicle. Um, Lots of electrical outlets. Um, I suspected they were going to do some electrical outlets, um, but not as many <laughs> as they did. I think no, it, was like eight, wired, eight, like, it was like 18, 19 connection points. Yeah. Something like that. Well, depending on it the trim has, level. Yeah. It has more than some apartments I've lived in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little surprised at the bed being only five and a half feet though. The Cybertruck's six and a half. So a little disappointed in the bed not being at least six and a half. I didn't, you know, on a crew cab, it makes for a really big truck if you're going for a full eight foot. Right. But at, at five and a half, I'm like, mm, Okay. Um, no evidence on the tailgate of having a stopper that comes up so you can extend it to, you know, for, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Um, let's see here. What else? Or the, I think that the coolest thing I saw was the, uh, the built-in scale for payload. Yeah, that's right. interesting. That can recalculate yeah, range. That is slick. That's well, a very cool feature. Yeah. And the thing is, is I think the number one complaint that I've seen on the internet, of course, is because everybody's comparing against the Cybertruck is the range issue. And, you know, I, I tried to get people to come down, just, you know, reality set in here, folks. You have to remember, Ford's trying to go after a, a price point, right? You, you, you can't make the base model $80,000. I mean, the Raptor guys would be happy to pay that, right? But you, you have to have a vehicle that's at the low end of the scale. So the bean counters have to come in and figure out what can they do. Well, batteries are the single most expensive thing on the car. So there's a trade-off between range and, and price. I mean, Tesla is doing things a little differently because they own the whole stack, mm-hmm. and Ford is now partnering with another company to, to build the battery. So anytime you have a middleman, it's going to make the costs a little higher. I'm not I'm not um, expecting the prices to be high forever. It will come down over time. But as a f- first effort, especially with a pickup truck, obviously the Mach-E has been out for you know a few months now, and it's doing fairly well. But uh, as Eric had mentioned earlier, this is the... This is a perfect model for Ford to get into. The F-150 oh, is an, it's, it's an iconic it, car. Truck. When in last year in, in the U.S., roughly a quarter of a million electric vehicles across all brands were sold and delivered. The Ford F-150 alone had over 900,000 sales last year. Yep. Right? So in terms of the, the reach of this vehicle, there is no contest that this is exactly how Ford had to go out the gate with this vehicle. Mm-hmm. It is. I watched the presentation in the wee hours in the morning last night because, you know, life is nuts. And I just, I mean, me, a Tesla owner who advocates all electric vehicles to be on the road as much as possible, was like pounding the table going, yes, 
Yes, I am excited for Ford. I'm excited for EV enthusiasts. I even tweeted this out early this morning about it. Um, the, the price point to, to what you're saying, Trevor, is exactly right. To get it to be under 40000 and they highlighted this in the presentation, it's even before any state or federal EV tax incentives, right? So that already, having it 40000 even if you're not eligible for any kind of incentive, it's already going to be a good value for the vehicle. The, the design is, again, classic Ford F-150. It's not a major change, but giving you that 12-inch uh, binnacle in front of you, having the 15-inch display, or 15-and-a-half-inch display, I should say, vertical in the center of your console. I mean, it just it's just a beautiful design, all told, for Ford's first venture into an electric truck. And for those who are the, I want to say anti-Cybertruck, but for those who really were not going to get the Cybertruck because it's just, it's just too weird for them or whatever it yeah. is. The Ford F-150 is the first mass-produced truck that looks like a normal truck. It's what we've come accustomed to with here in the U.S. And we know that market is just screaming for something good. And it was great to see at the end of the presentation that they brought out the, um, the Mach-E GT and to have them come out with the e-Transit. So, and we know the e-Transit, like we see those everywhere, yeah. right? For like Amazon trucks and everything else. Tesla so even uses them. <laughs> yeah, so so it's it was just there were I didn't walk away from the presentation thinking, oh, that was a miss. Like, no, the charging network, I was like kind of a little dig at Tesla, but I understand. Um, but it was but it was because I mean, if you factor in public chargers that Tesla can be compatible with, that the numbers don't meet up, but whatever. Um, but it's still like you can fast charge, you can power your home as a generator. I mean, it, it appealed to I think even those who were like I'm not sure I want to get an electric truck, but there could be one feature of that vehicle. You're like, ah, that hits home for me. Mm -hmm. So it's it's good to see that. Again, we we want to see more companies do stuff like this because we know that time's of the essence when it comes to climate change. But like there is an audience wanting electric, but they're right now limited to how they can get theirs. And now you got Ford coming out with three vehicles, two of which really hit a major mark between businesses and the transit. And then also having the truck owners that we're seeing now with the Ford F-150. I was hoping that the the truck, and I had said this earlier because I'd asked people, like, listen, I'm not trying to be a, a goof about this or anything like that, but I'm generally interested to see, like, what it what would it take for you to get to switch to an electric F-150? Because let's face it, <laughs> the car has been around for 100 years, right? Mm-hmm. They've been making trucks for a long time. The people that own them rely on them. They know how they operate. They're used to the gasoline thing. And in certain market segments, you got people that look down on electric vehicles because it's not big and tough and it doesn't make noise and it doesn't spew smoke. And there, there's a mentality there, right? So I was just curious to see, like, how many people have that mentality as opposed to, like, what's it going to take you to, to get into this? And I always thought that the car would have to be quite compelling in terms of features because if you're just going to offer an F, a, like an electrified version of it, where's the incentive to switch? Because in some ways, if the battery's too expensive... The savings on fuel is going to take you a long time to recoup. Now, it's a, a little better on a truck because there are gas guzzlers after the fact. Right. But, but what is it going to take? And I was actually pleasantly surprised. I was I was surprised at the price, and uh, it has enough compelling features on there, I think, for the people that are looking at it, would say, yeah, okay, um, I'll consider this. Uh, the unknown, of course, is how are the dealers going to, to deal with this, right? Because obviously they make money on repairs and, and sales and stuff. Um, however, in, in some respects, if you're looking at fleet vehicles in the sense that, I mean, somebody who buys a truck and they just go to the grocery store with it, that's one thing. You're not going to see too mm-hmm. many repairs on something like that. But the guys who use it on the job sites beating the hell out of it, those cars are going to need repairs. So don't fear for the dealers. They're they're still going to make their service money and stuff. But um, remains to be seen how 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 well they get on board with selling this as opposed to selling a Laureate that has all the features in it and they make potentially more profit on. I don't know at this point. So, uh, Ian, what are your thoughts? I mean, you're, you're, you're in the car business and, uh, what, what are your thoughts on it? No, I, I can't really add too much to what you guys have already summarized right, here. The, I, it, the... It's essentially, all right, that's it, right. <laughs> but uh, no, it's true. I, I think it's the perfect choice for somebody who wants maximum conventional, like uh, the safe, normal what they're used to you know with enough new twists to say yeah okay you you know your upfront sticker price is higher but here's all the extra cool things that it can do Mm -hmm. you know like never mind once you factor in you know as farley clearly pointed out especially when you get the entry-level commercial one you know your cost of operating is going to be super super low and remember when the cyber truck came in it was like oh they're going to cancel the thirty-nine thousand dollar one nope 
I still stick to that point. The commercial operators are going to love it. Yeah. Because if you don't need a massive amount of range, it's just to yeah. haul stuff around the city all day. That thing is going to save huge amounts of money. They, so the bean counters so two, are going to love it. So, two so th- at every level, I think he, the, there's a version of it that, that that makes sense, you know. And I've seen all the naysayers. It's like, oh, it has three less miles of this version. And like, look, guys, calm down. You know, like we're we're, we're nitpicking over details here. <laughs> and yeah, we're all Tesla fans, and we we know that the Cybertruck's going to be amazing. But we also know that not everybody is into it. There's some people that want a familiar brand name. I mean, brand loyalty and trucks is mm-hmm. like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, outside of Harley Davidson, there's nobody that has more brand loyalty than trucks. So, maybe so us. us. I have I have two yeah. things on this. Um, you know, just in in relation to the Cybertruck, uh, you know, I'm still seeing a lot of the sentiment from the truck guys out there that the Cybertruck's not for them because of the looks. And I'm like, okay, guys, you you have to remember. Maybe you're not aware of this, but the Cybertruck looks the way it is because Tesla has to build it in the way that they deem necessary for them to get to the features that they want to do. Um, and uh, to get their toe in the market. And I, I'm sure the Cybertruck's going to do exceptionally well, and the F-150 is not going anywhere. It's going to do exceptionally well as well. Um, but Tesla has to do things radical in, in, in certain respects because the truck has to be better in a lot of ways in order to get a toehold into this market. Yeah. So they certainly yeah. designed it in a certain way to make it look. My second point, and I'll let you talk here, in an, Eric, in a second, mm-hmm. our friend Mark Benton, if he had not changed his mind about the Cybertruck, he'd be buying an F-150. Do we know that yeah. for a fact? He didn't sound too... I, I mean, I, I saw a few of Mark's tweets and he was kind of like, eh, he didn't look too... No, too but if the Cybertruck... Had he not changed his mind about the... I'm sorry, I'm eating a cookie yeah. here. Had he I not... Said, what the hell? Had he not changed his mind about the Cybertruck, he would be ordering one of these. Or, or a Rivian. I, yeah, I mean, my feeling, my feeling with those audiences really is twofold. Uh, first is the Cybertruck itself. I, and I, I, again, my feelings on that vehicle are well established on this show if you're a longtime listener. Um, but in short, I, I personally don't like the Cybertruck. But at the same time, Tesla is an unconventional company when it comes oh, yeah. to how they approach certain things. And so it stands to reason that they're not going to make another truck replica because if you ideally want something like that, either eventually the competitors would come out with one vis-a-vis Ford, or uh, you would then have you know, this opportunity for them to do something totally strange and different. And, you know, the the futuristic concept cars that we've often seen in many of the famous sci-fi films that we love growing up. Like, I mean, we talk about Demolition Man, we talk about uh, Blade Runner, all this other stuff. Like, we just were like, got to be so cool to have that car. I mean, right now, right now, if Ryan had a functional time machine DeLorean, <laughs> we would all lose our ever loving minds. Yep. But the fact that he, you know, but the, the fact that he aspired to have a DMC and then eventually got one, right? Like people st- st- to still to this day are like, that is so cool, man. Oh, right. Yeah. That's a classic car. Right. So there, so, and that's a weird car. It's not something that was a conventional passenger car back in the eighties. So, so I, I think, I think the, um, the overriding point I want to make is this. It is good to see that legacy automakers are taking their existing vehicles. And we saw this in the, in the video last night where they're showing uh, sort of like a quick snap together how the car was assembled. Yeah. Skateboard design, base pattern, battery packs go in and then build the chassis around it. And I think if Tesla's proof of concept, that worked. Others are doing it now too. It seems to be moving forward. That's what you're all going to see. It's just how will the vehicle then look around the battery pack. And you're going to see a lot of automakers go, listen, this design's always worked for us. Our, our audience knows it. Our owners know it. It's just a decades-long design. We're going to keep with it. Great. And if you improve the cabin so it is modern and you got cooler seats and a nice display, you know, great, awesome, fantastic. So I, there's, there's nothing from this. There's no drawback from this. And I'm like, well, that's a bad thing. No, everything they did last night, even for me, who does not like trucks, but knows what the audience reach is of this vehicle for Ford. I'm, I'm all in, man. I, I'll, I'll gladly record commercials for them. Like, let's go, (laughs) let's, let's get, let's get the uh, market electrified. They also did a good job on the interior. Um, yeah, yeah, it's got you know it's a combination of an F one fifty and uh, and a Mach E, you know, with the screen mm-hmm. and the software updates mm-hmm. and stuff. So they certainly did that correct. Uh, we've yep. talked about this before. You know, we've seen videos of the of the new F one fifty where it's got the nice flip down seat and the built in laptop work area and stuff. So that that's all carried over. So I'm glad to see that. Um, my other point, of course, before we move on here, because I don't want to belabor the point. 
we're waiting for the other shoe to drop now. We haven't seen the final, final, final design of the Cybertruck. So I'm kind of wondering, like, how many cues the Tesla take from other car manufacturers or truck manufacturers, and how much have they been able to blend in? All we've seen is, this, is, is the prototype at this point. So I'm curious to see if they've taken... I mean, it's too late for them right now to see exactly, you know, to implement anything yeah. from the F-150, but... <laughs> But didn't Elon say it's like it's pretty much what you see is what you get? It's I, I a saw little some... smaller. Yeah, but but Tesla, the thing with Tesla is that, yes, they show us prototypes that are production intent, but they don't tell us all the little, small little details, the little things that they put in. And, and the, largely a lot of that stuff is not even known until they get into customers' hands and they discover these things like, oh, that's really clever. So there's a lot of stuff about the truck that we still don't know yet. Oh no no! I know feature wise, it's probably going to be mental. I, like like I, you like could put, tell her they're holding back. But I mean, it, I think looks wise, I think it's dialed in. Oh oh no no! The look, yeah, okay. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, yeah I'm not. That's, sorry that yeah. I missed. I, I missed. Well, I was just thinking. Running. I mean, you look at the F one fifty, and they got that great big front, and they've got electrical outlets in there. God, put some electrical outlets in the front trunk of the Cybertruck. Put some in the sails. Uh, there's lots of little possibilities mm -hmm. for them to improve on. Sure. And I'm I'm curious to see how much of those sweating of the little details are actually going to show up in the final product. All right, let's uh, let's move on here to uh, listener question, um, listener and viewer questions that send in. Uh, thank you for submitting all that stuff. Um, let's go to the first question. It comes from our friends Aftermarket EV, and it kind of dovetails into what we were just talking. Which EV pickup will be the first to deliver 10,000 vehicles, Cybertruck, Rivian, or the F-150? Well, first of all, I didn't know it was a race, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's a good uh, question, it's, though. It's a good question. Uh, my yeah. money, Rivian, hands down. They're starting deliveries next month. Yeah. Right? Cybertruck yeah. and F-150, really not till 2022. So 10,000, I think, is pretty reasonable between now and... Yeah, no, no, just because they got the head start out of the gate. That mm -hmm. makes complete sense to me. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. We will definitely see F1, uh, We'll definitely see Rivians in the next few months on the road, so... Hmm. All right, next uh, question comes from Aurelio. He says, uh, do you think Tesla will deal with having two Model Ys built with different batteries, 2170 and 4680 structural pack? Who's going to want the Model Y from Fremont once Texas is online? Um, well, again, we know that the next Model Y that's going to be built out of the Texas factory is obviously going to have the 4680 cells, and eventually they will update, you know, the Fremont model. I don't know. You know, unless you're technical and you're, like, deep into Tesla stuff like we are, I don't think the average person is really going to care at the end of the day. Or even notice. Or even notice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think... And, and that's becoming more and more the case. I mean, you know, especially, Eric, you must notice because you were, like, the first person here to have your Model 3. Mm -hmm. um, there's a huge difference in, the number, you know, the Tesla community as it was just a few years ago in terms of how into the details they were and obsessive and today. versus now. I meet so many owners, it's like, oh, I didn't know my car did this, you know, or like mm -hmm. you're talking to them kind of like, wow, you're driving this thing like I, it's a Camry, I met somebody, but it doesn't use gas. Right? I met somebody yeah, in the Walmart. Right. I met somebody in the Walmart parking lot the other day who recognized me and didn't even know that the Model 3 had a power lift gate or trunk. And I'm like, yeah, because he bought his exactly. car. He's happy with it. He's done. There are there are a number of people I've come across in the last few years who um, have bought uh, products for their vehicles, not realizing it's not a fit, that's not for their car, it's not compatible, it's meant for a different vehicle. Like, just so many owners go, oh, that's a cool thing, let me put it in my car. Like, um, your, your, your car already has a power lift gate? You don't, you don't, you don't yeah. need to buy that, right? Or like, hey, um, can I, can I have my, my front trunk lid just kind of open automatically? Can I, can I do that? No, you can't, right? <laughs> so, so, but there are, I mean, but again, we, we spent so much time waiting for the vehicles to come for months, yeah. right? So the anxiety, the, the anxiousness and uh, the excitement, like we just were like, we we're like, like palpitating our wrists because we're like, I gotta calm down. I can't. And and you know, and then people like Trevor were just pumping out content like it's freaking Pez, and everyone's just like soaking all this information in because it's all we had. Now mm -hmm. that the car has been out for some years, people are like, eh. You know, so they don't, they don't, they don't, you know, get into the minutia of all the details as much. It's as they very to. different today than it was earlier. Oh like yeah, all the anticipation of the Model Three really built up, and it. Was, I think Cybertruck 
I think Cybertruck's going to be like Model Three. There's yes. so much. There's so much little that we know that as stuff does get out closer to production dates, um, that those that audience will just be like, "Oh my god!" And then the news will get out, and other people are like, "Hmm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my car now too." So that's that'll happen eventually, I think, with like with Model Three. Um, but then you know that too over time will eventually die down. But um, I'm with yeah, you 100. Even if like why owners aren't like even like craving the details they were with three because even because mm -hmm. it was like it's just it's a bigger model three so you yeah the, you know, the model y was different yeah the the model y definitely had a different vibe to it it was just like okay it's a bigger model three we know everything yeah. about it it's, it's no big deal certainly um, the size that a lot of people wanted that very much was too small. yeah it was yeah. It, it was very much a sleeper in terms of anticipation yeah uh but yeah you're absolutely right Cybertruck. once we know more is going to take off it's going to feel like model three days all over again at least Probably. it does for me i that's the most exciting <laughs> car that i'm waiting yeah. for um so anyways, uh, let's move on here. Next question comes from Josh. He says, with the Model Y coming out of Texas with new battery sales, do you also think the new paint options will be, avail uh, will be available? Also, hmm. will the Model Ys from Texas uh, be the ones you we get in Ontario? To appreciate all the works you guys do. Um, paint options. Yeah, well, all we know about paint at this point is what Elon has said um, about the paint factory that they're building in Berlin. Now, I do know that they use Durr, D-U-R-R, German company. Um, they use that in Fremont, Berlin, and of course, Gigafactory, Texas. Um, I would hope that eventually they're going to offer some different colors. It's a little overdue. We do know that they're going to have a, a special color or a new color for the Model S plaid, that crimson red or whatever they call it, that looks kind of purplish. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, at some point, they're going to refresh the colors, but it's just... Right now, it doesn't seem to be a priority. Um, as far as the ones we get in Ontario, he was talking about Canada. Um, well, we do know that the Gigafactory cars um, from Texas are destined more for the East Coast eventually. But right now, if you, you want to buy a Model Y, they're going to come out of Fremont for the time being until production ramps up and then who knows what's going to happen. So I, I really don't know how to answer that um, other than what Elon has said that you know, they're going to have a factory on the West Coast and they're going to have a factory that'll handle East Coast production. So in due time, maybe, but I don't, I really don't know. Uh, let's see here. Two more questions. One, next one comes from Lester. He says, are there any updates on your CCS adapter? Have you been able to get it to work reliability, uh, reliably? Um, yes, I have the latest uh, firmware on it and it works well. Um, for those of you who watched my video, when I first got it, I had some trouble at a Petro Canada station. Um, I chalk it up to that station just being goofy. It just I could never get it to work properly. But um, I went to Electrify Canada, Electrify America. No problems. I used uh, some... Um, Flow chargers, circuit electric or whatever it is, no problems. Uh, I will say this, that <clears throat> even though it is rated at um, 200 amps, um, well, 200 amps at 400 Two, watts. 200, yeah, 200 kilowatts, right? No, 80 kilowatts. When you do the math, it's, you know, 400 volts at 200 amps. Oh, it is 200 amps. You're yeah, right. it's yeah, 80 yeah. kilowatts. But because it's emulating the Chatamo protocol, it's limited at 50. I've never seen more than 50 on it. So, oh. you know, but now that it's only $460 US, it's a little bit more palatable than when I first got it because they were asking $960. Oh. You know, I told them, guys, you can't, you know, oh, well, you know, and I said, well, do something. So anyways, they, they adjusted their <laughs> prices. So if if you don't want to use Chatamo, uh, your CCS adapter, I'm talking about North America here, guys. Uh, for those of you who might be listening in Europe, your situation's different. You're in North America. We don't use CCS on the, on the Teslas, so you have to buy an adapter if you want to use it. So anyways... It's a toss-up. Um, most of the charging stations I've seen have Chatamo and CCS. The majority are, the new ones are built, have more CCS than they do Chatamo. And that's just because of, you know, the cars and the adoption of CCS at this point. So anyways, it works, but I don't, I, both, I have both the Chatamo, the Tesla one, and the CCS, and I, I never reuse them. I, I just use the superchargers. So it's nice to have them, but other than that, I haven't really used it. But it is reliable and it works. So they finally got the firmware working correct, correctly. Uh, last question in the evening comes from Chris. He says, I've been building a uh, like history using the built-in streaming music channels in my Model 3. Will it be possible to transfer that history over my Cybertruck? Oh, Chris, that's a great, great question. I really hope so. Um, Elon did say that eventually they're going to move the driver profiles to the cloud. So maybe we'll see it in version 11. I don't know. Um, Scuttlebutt going around is that version 11 will not only have a whole new UI, uh, it will also come with a new app on the phone. 
so we'll see what transpires. But uh, I would hope that all of that stuff goes along with the driver profiles so that you can indeed transfer them between vehicles. That's what would be really smart of them to do as well is be able to put it on the thumb drive used for sentry mode. So you can locally store the profile. So if you go into either another or. vehicle, you can actually upload the profile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Either either way, I'll take it. Sure. I would love that. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, <laughs> make FSD <laughs> transferable between vehicles. Too. Oh, gosh. Oh, here we go. Oh, yes. no. I know. Everybody's talking. <laughs> about and and part, of, part of what concerns about the cloud-based is there could be people, and I've had this in my own car where I'll listen to the streaming music, um, uh, through Slack, ra- Slack or radio or whatever. And all of a sudden, I, I have no signal in the vehicle. And so the streaming stops and yep. I can't hear anything until I regain services. If you have driver profiles stored that are cloud-based, but you have an owner who is in a very remote location and there is no connectivity, uh, it makes sense to have something that's more... like Again, the local backup would be a smart thing to do it for all the time. Mm-hmm. But then mm-hmm. once you regain signal, it could then try to up- upload that little... A bit of data, but I think locally stored should be a default setting. Yeah, I'm the same way because I have a Spotify subscription and I have it on my phone. My wife has it on her phone and I have it in my car. And mm. she gets in the car and she picks a channel on there and off it goes and I lose it on my phone. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it'd be nice if it was a little more floating. Yeah. So anyways, uh, that's the end of the questions. You guys have anything you, you wanted to uh, talk about or are you just going to... Should we drop our little my little news bomb there that I just posted to the uh Did to you post form? it on the forum? I did. Man, go ahead. Why did you tell me? Well, <laughs> because I was racing to do it because we got into the show. I mean, I okay. was working on the imagery for this, like literally right up until show recording time. Okay. All right. So go tell ahead. us, Ian, what's new in the world of wheels? Well, let me tell you, Eric. We are working on something I, I think um, a number of you are going to like. Um, let's go back a little bit in time. I guess um, about a year and a bit ago when... Um, we finally saw the fabled referral wheel, which became also the track package wheel. We all know and love the Zero G, you know, that yes, beautiful sir. satin gray 20-inch wheel. That, um, which you can either win that or a week with a car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like you're going to take a week of the car, really, when you can have a set of those. So back when that thing was uh, just a rumor and we hadn't seen it yet, um, the verbiage that Tesla was using was interesting. They had actually written it at some point in, in some of the publicity on it that these were going to be these forged track package wheels. Now, we didn't know what they looked like, but they definitely said forged. And then at some point, I don't know when, just prior to them being released, um, the text on that was just, you know, track package wheels. The forged part dropped out. And sure enough, when I got my own set and uh, took them to work and examined them under the microscope, it was pretty obvious that they were no longer forged. They were flow formed. Now, flow forming, we've talked about it on the show a little bit before, is still a pretty decent process. Um, that's where they cast the center spokes of the wheel and the barrel portion is formed using this rotary forging process. It's a little bit like how you make clay pottery. You sort of extrude the barrel out under force and it makes it a little thinner, a little lighter. All Model 3 wheels and Model Y wheels are made this way. So it gives you a good balance of cost and performance. Uh, We do our fast competition wheels like the FCO4 is built that way. It gives a very good result. I mean, nothing to sneeze at, but you know, when you got it in your head, you're getting a forged wheel. That's like the no plus ultra, right? It's kind of like the top dog. So we're all kind of like, oh, they're not forged. Okay, well, just the same. You know, they're they're still for the same size. They're about actually a little bit wider, right? The standard performance model wheel is a 20 by 8.5. The track pack wheel, the 0G, is a 20 by 9. They still managed to shave a pound off it compared to the standard sport 20-inch wheel. So I thought that's pretty good. But then in the back of my mind, it's like, wouldn't it be cool to really do a forged version of it? Like, you think it would sell? You think it would go? Well, um, I conned the powers that be into doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it might be one of the stupid things I've conned them into, but here we go, folks. You you got to help me out here. We got to we got to convince them that this is not the wackiest thing, or even if it is, uh, that it's going to fly. So we are actually going to build. Um, what is going to be called the Fast EV04, and it's going to be our first fully forged production wheel. And uh, get this, um, and we're still at the prototype stage with it. it, it uh, conceptually, we, uh, we're tweaking the last little bits, but so far uh, the design says we should be at about 23 pounds even for the 20 by 9. So we've knocked four pounds out of this wheel. So I'm going to bring like it up. Tw- Here is the post on the forum. For those who are watching on YouTube, and look at the take a gander at these gorgeous wheels. Yeah, 
So you can see it, it bears a very strong family resemblance to the Zero-G. It's not exactly the same. Um, we worked a lot with the spoke to make it a little bit more rigid and lighter. So it's optimized. You'll actually see a little bit of FC, uh, FCO4 DNA. Yes, I do. I'm sure. Yeah, I, yeah, anybody who knows that wheel knows that there's some of them in there because it's very hard to beat that spoke design. Oh, it's incredibly light and strong. Take a set in the so, satin gray. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I'm hoping everybody's going to help out with. So we've got the sizing dialed in here. Our plan right now is we're going to do uh, staggered 19s for Model 3. So it'll be available in a 19 by 8.5 and, and a 19 9.5. And that 19, nine and a half will also be the standard size for Model Y. So Perfect. you can do the Model 3, Model Y. And then same thing in 20 inch. We're going to do a 20 by 9, which is square all the way around on Model 3. And we'll also do a 20 by 10, which be, be square all the way around on a Model Y. Or it becomes a staggered rear option. So if you want to do 9s and 10s on your Model 3, we can do that too. So that is where we're at. The only question is the finish. Um, because these are so expensive to build, and you know we'll we'll talk about pricing at some point, but we're we're super reasonable for a forged wheel. This is probably one going to be one of the least expensive forged wheels anywhere in North America. Um, certainly more expensive than a cast wheel, but way less than what you're used to paying for a forged wheel. We're still dialing in the pricing, but um, because it is a much more exclusive item, we can't make all the colors in the rainbow. So yeah. we narrowed it down to four choices, and the first one is a brushed aluminum finish. Uh, which I personally love. I think um, this makes it very distinct. Uh, you know, no one's going to mistake it for your run-of-the-mill standard zero G. Ian, will it have a clear color. clear coat to protect it? Yeah, there, there's okay. a clear coat on it, so okay. there's no maintenance with it. It's just as easy to wash and, and take care of as a standard painted wheel. And I think what we're going to do, uh, I shared some very close-up pictures of you guys of the prototypes earlier today. Yeah. We might put a very, very fine gray tint in it. Um, the sample prototype I have right now has that, and it's just stunning. It just gives it this little extra contrast and richness because it just darkens the aluminum color. Mm -hmm. So I am head over heels in love with this. I'm really hoping. I'm, I'm leading the witnesses here. I, I got to <laughs> let you guys pick, okay? I want the masses to pick. I can't pick because if they don't sell, I'm a dead man. So we got to pick what we like, right? What please you guys want to buy. Please buy the can't, wheels. Exactly. But I think the brushed is really, really cool. Of course, the satin gray, there you go. Yep. Um, as we call it in a replica line, the space gray. That's the actual original color that you saw the Zero Gs in. It's very, very popular. Certainly very pretty. Yep. Now you have a satin black as well is the third choice. And then finally, a gloss black, a more conventional gloss black. Now, um, so, I'm just looking at these. These are renders, right? Correct. Okay. So I'm looking at the, is it just the lighting from the render? It makes the barrel look like two-tone or is that just, just a, an aberration? Yeah. Don't worry about what's going on with the barrel. I mean, okay. these are just quick and dirty renders that we did. So okay. yeah, the barrels are not really representative. Obviously they'll match in every case, the, the color of the face of the wheel, but we just wanted to get the color of the face of the wheel approximately right so that people know what we're talking God, about. These would look really good with, with the, with the Porsche Taycan white treatment on the inside. Ooh, look at you getting all fancy. <laughs> look, buddy, it's it's hard enough for me to get these things off the ground. Sorry, man. Let's sorry, sorry, doing sorry. Tone paint, you know, I'm going to get murdered. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the plan. We we really want to um, we really want to get these things into production. Um, I've got the green light on two finishes. I mean, if the sales are really there, maybe we can float a third. Mm -hmm. But uh, two finishes for sure. So I need I need the Tesla community hive mind to chime in. So if you uh, Go to the uh, the show notes. I'm sure Trevor will be good enough to click on the link here. I just tweeted it um, out, and uh, I will put the, the link in the uh, show notes description. That's it. So it's on our Twitter feeds. Um, you can go there. You can go straight to the Tesla owner um, Tesla owners online forum. There's there's a thread on it there. Yep. Uh, EV044 wheel, and um, that's it. Yes, I would very much love everyone's opinion on this. And if you have questions, by all means, throw them on the thread. I'll be happy to answer them on Twitter. What's, on the thread. What do you think the timeline of availability will be? We're gunning for some time this fall, which is kind of a goofy time to, to launch a high-performance wheel, but we think this is going to be probably bigger in the U.S. market even than in Canada because there's a huge appetite for forged wheels in the oh, U.S. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we have, I think a lot of owners in Canada will jump on them, but uh, we're not going to let the seasons you know, hold us back. We want to get these things up and running, mm -hmm. and then that way we'll, you know, by running some of them through in the fall and winter in, in the warmer markets, I think that'll give us a good idea for spring of really what's the most popular sizes and, uh, and color, and we can... We can ramp up from there. Excellent, great news. I was looking forward to. I'm surprised that you actually put the put the post up just in time for the show. So thank you for doing that. That's awesome. 
Cool. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. I want to say thanks for everybody for joining in. So, uh, Eric, since you're our, our new guest that is appearing, you go first. Right. So weird. People. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, right? So, uh, first and foremost, thanks, guys, for having me on the show. Uh, it's been, I don't even know how long it's been. It, it, this is episode 103. I So, it's been two shows. It's been like, what, a couple of months since yeah, I've been on the something show? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Who knows? Uh, six weeks, maybe? Yeah, six, seven weeks. Something like that. It was definitely back in, like, the... Uh, late March, early April era. Anyway. <laughs> hi, everybody. Um, you can follow me on social media. Uh, I have a Twitter account. The uh, handle on that account is ECFIX. That's E-C-F-I-X. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see the Chiron down here says some random guy. I mean, that's basically true nowadays. I am just some random guy to most of you. But anyway, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, ECFIX. Uh, if you find me on Facebook, you can try to friend me. I'm not going to accept it. But yes, <laughs> tw- Twitter, ECFIX. There you go. <laughs> All right, Ian, how about you? Well, on Twitter, you can find me. The uh, handle is at Ian Pavelko. Um, DMs are open, so if you have any questions, happy to help you out wherever I can. Tesla owners online, the handle is Matt Hungarian. Uh, same thing. Use the little at symbol with my uh, with my handle, Matt Hungarian, there, just because I'm not on there 100% of the time, and uh, I need to sort of be called up occasionally. Like Beetlejuice. Um, t- yes, exactly, like Beetlejuice. Do it three times, and I'm, I'm generally bound to show up. So glad to help there. And uh, finally, uh, if you're looking for something in the way of uh, Tesla wear, you can find my shop on Teespring, T-E-E-Spring, all one word, dot com. And then search for the Mad Hungarian Evolve Wear store once you're on the site and you will find a whole variety of different Tesla themed things. And one lonely little space T-shirt, which I popped up there. Rove it like you stole it. Rove it like you stole it. Yeah. A couple of them going out. Some people are digging it. Cool. Excellent. Well, I guess that leaves me. You can find me on Twitter. The handle's Tesla Owners Online. You can check out the forum at teslaownersonline.com. Always, as usual, the best place and the safest and the most fun place and friendliest place to discuss all things on Tesla. And uh, we will see you on the next show. Oh, by the way, I want to say a big thank you, and I always forget to do this, and I'm, oh, God, I feel bad for it. But I want to say a big thank you to our sponsors. That's the guys at EvanX for their accessories and the uh, guys at Fine Lab for their ceramic coatings. Great guys. Check out their products. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching and listening, guys. We'll see you next time. See ya. Bonsoir tout le monde. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>